What's up, everyone? Um, lately, I've been thinking a lot about uh, intelligence. And the reason is, or one of the reasons is, because every time I hear about robots, the question always comes up of artificial intelligence. And then you start talking about artificial intelligence, then the question always arises, but what is intelligence exactly? Or even if you're talking about animals, and somebody's saying, oh, this animal's intelligent, or whatever, people always ask, well, what is intelligence? And so, I've been thinking really hard of what the definition of that is exactly. What does it mean to be intelligent? And it's really not defined anywhere. I mean, you look in in any textbook or you know Wikipedia or wherever, and it's really not specifically defined. And so I've been trying to define it, and I think I have. I think I have very specifically defined what is intelligence exactly. And I figured out what's missing in um, artificial intelligence. I figured out what part is missing. The reason that robots and other uh, machines are not intelligent. I think I figured out the the missing piece of the of the puzzle, if you will. Anyhow, so I wanted to tell you guys my uh, my formula, my whole formula, what I've figured out. So first of all, these are the requirements for intelligence. The the first requirement is the ability to receive information that is through your senses like we have or through sensors or receptors anything like that any ability to receive information you know in your environment any any kind of ability to do that that's the first requirement the second is the ability to save and restore information memory quote unquote memory this is really important this uh, I, I kind of struggled with for a second I, I, I thought is, is memory a necessary requirement for intelligence so I, I literally asked myself that question. And I figured out that it is. Because I, I went to the extremes. I said, okay, what if something, whatever it may be, had absolutely no memory whatsoever? Could it be intelligent? And I was thinking about that. And I came to the conclusion of no. And the reason is, is because if you had absolutely no memory whatsoever, then you would just be going around aimlessly. You... Whatever you did wouldn't be based on any, any um, your decisions wouldn't be based on any um, facts or any prior conclusions. You wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to go this way because it's safer or because there's food over there. Because you wouldn't know any of that because you didn't have any memory. So you couldn't come up with um, any ideas, any kind of uh, hypotheses, theories, nothing whatsoever because you have no frame of reference. You have none. If you had absolutely no memory, you had absolutely no frame of reference. So memory is a requir requir absolute requirement for uh, intelligence. But memory by itself does no good if you don't have any information. That's where the receiving information. You have to have the ability to store information and you have to have the ability to receive information. So that's one and two. The third is the ability to transmit information. The third part of being intelligent, the third part of being intelligent is the ability to transmit information. Okay, say you receive information and you have the ability to store information. Well, that's fine. But if you don't have any ability to transmit that information, imagine, if you will, like uh, an MP3 player, an iPod, with no screen on it whatsoever. You could uh, hook something up and you could upload music to it and it could save and store the music because it has memory. But say it didn't have any screen, it didn't have any headphone jack, had no way for you to get that information out of there if it had no way to transmit the information uh, to you or if, uh, say even a human say you can have the smartest person in the world but if they have no no way of talking to you or uh, transmitting their information to you in some way writing something down even if they're blind some way to transmit that information then they're not intelligent you have to be able to transmit the information that you're storing okay that's third the fourth is the ability to receive and store information on what has been transmitted and communicated. That is, to know what you have said and told to someone else. This, this part is kind of complicated, but it's, this, this is the missing piece of the puzzle, and this is extremely important uh, for intelligence. Okay, ability to receive and store information on what has been transmitted and communicated. That means that you have to know what you told someone else. Say I told some girl, Nancy. I said, Nancy, you're pretty. Okay, 
when I'm telling her, I'm not just transmitting that information. I'm telling her that, and also at the same time, I'm receiving that. I'm, I'm receiving what I'm telling her. Um, how can I say this? I'm becoming aware of what I told her. So later on, I could, I could say, oh yeah, I told you, Nancy, that you're pretty, you know. Or uh, I told my kid to do this. I told my kid to take out the trash. I'm not only transmitting the information, I'm becoming aware of the information that I have transmitted. And I'm becoming aware that, that they are aware of what I told them. I know that's kind of confusing. And... You, you do that by, okay, you look at somebody and you say, hey, do this or that. And they either say, yes, okay, I'll do it. Or you see your reactions in their facial expressions. Whatever it is, when you, when you transmit the information to somebody, you become aware that you told them that. Whereas with a robot, this is the problem with robots. Robots, I, I see this. I see that with a lot of supposed intelligent robots or close to intelligent robots, they tell people things, but the robot doesn't realize that it's telling you that. It's just spewing information and doesn't realize that, like say a robot is here telling me something, but the robot doesn't realize that I'm receiving the information. I could ask it again and it would tell me the same thing because it doesn't, it, it doesn't know that it already told me that. It doesn't know what information has already been sent out. Or even if it knows, it's like, okay, I already said this, but who have I said it to? You know, like if, I, if I'm standing in front of a room of people and I'm saying something, I know that this, this, and that person, they became aware of that. So it's not just transmitting information, it's becoming aware, it's knowing, you know, who you transmitted the information to. And that is very important. And that is, again, that's the missing part of robots. No artificial intelligence that I've ever seen has been able to, uh, is able to do that. Like I said, they could spew all kinds of things, but they're, they don't have that awareness uh, of what they told somebody else. Okay? The next part, the number five, is the last part. Ability to utilize received and restored information. That is, uh, not necessarily physically, but you uh, take the information that you have and you put it to some kind of practical use. Uh, I thought of Stephen Hawking a lot in this. And this is why I left out physical requirements, that a, 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 a being doesn't have to physically be able to do anything. Because Stephen Hawking, uh, one of the most intelligent people in the world, unarguably, but he can't physically do anything. But that doesn't mean he isn't intelligent. He's extremely intelligent, but he can't physically do anything. You know, he, he is able to transmit, you know, communicate information to other people um, in kind of non-physical means. He, you know, uh, he, I think he blinks and he uses his, you know, computers, uh, it's... His blinking is attached to his computer device and, you know, uh, it transmits messages, so on and so forth. Anyways, he is able to utilize information, you know, he's able to tell these people these things and it's like, okay, this is the information and this is what you should do with it, uh, this is how you should go about um, employing this theory or anything like that. He's, he's able to utilize inf uh, the information that he's, he's putting out, even though physically he's not able to, to, to do things. So... The physical part is not a requirement for intelligence, but the ability to utilize the information you have. It's not, basically, it's not just knowing something. It's not just having all this information. It's, okay, you have this information, but how are you going to apply this in life? However you apply it, it doesn't matter, but you have to be able to apply it somehow. And that's intelligence. That is the underlying fundamental definition requirements for intelligence. To, for intelligence, and, I, and I'll go over this again. So first, you have you have to have the ability to uh, store and receive information. So store information, store information that has been received, times the ability to transmit the information, times the ability to utilize the information that has been received, stored. And that is known. That is intelligence. The ability to store information that has been received times the ability to transmit information times the ability to utilize information that has been received, stored, and the information that is known. That equals intelligence. Oops. <laughs> I started to spell intelligence wrong. In Intelligence. And that's not a requirement for intelligence. You don't have to know how to spell intelligence. So, 
<laughs> Even if you can't spell intelligence, you're fine. Anyhow, um, yeah, that's what I, 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 I came up with. And again, um, the, the, the missing piece that I found is uh, the inability for um, robots or artificial, intelli artificial intelligence systems to know what information has been relayed. And that seems the only part. They could do all the other things, you know, a, a robot or a machine, they could receive information, they could store information, you know, computers have memory, they could transmit information, you know, a robot could easily tell you something. And even the uh, ability to utilize, even the last part, um, you know, robots, they perform tasks, you know, the, you know, you upload information, you tell them how to do a task, so they could utilize that information. So they could do everything. It's the one thing, it's the, the number four on my list, the ability to receive and store information that you have transmitted, that you communicate, to know what, what you told somebody else. You're aware that that person is aware. That's the missing key of intelligence. So anyhow, let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, I, as a scientist, I'm not saying this is 100%. This is me submitting my idea to the community, to the world as a whole. And if there is flaws in this, find the flaws. Tell me what's wrong. Tell me things that need to be added onto it to be minus, but from from uh, uh, what I consider, you know, from the the thought process that I've done so far, this this right here, this formula, see, every one of these points seems to be mandatory requirement. Now I will say uh, before I end this video that it doesn't matter how much of these main of these main points right here in order to for something to be intelligent. You can have the little bit of memory and you can have a little bit of ability to um, transmit information and a little bit of ability to utilize it, but you're still intelligent. So uh, that, that's why I did the multiply. Now, the more you're able to do this and the more able you do that, you know, that multiplies your ability to say multiplies your intelligence. But you can have very little abilities in each one of these and still be intelligent. But the main part is that you have to have at least a little bit uh, uh, of these abilities in every category. So anyhow, um, that is my idea. You know, I'm rambling on now, but I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the whole formula down in the description box. And again, um, let me know what you guys think.